As the Gonzaga representatives are making their way to the dais, a couple of uh, reminders that flash photography and recording equipment of any kind is prohibited here in the interview room. We also ask you to silence all cell phones. And please, as you ask your questions to student athletes and coaches, to identify yourself and the media outlet you are representing. Before we get uh, with the introductions, we want to pass along this note that Gonzaga, with the victory today, extends its nation's longest active streak with nine straight sweet 16 appearances overall. Uh, joined on the dais by head coach Mark Few, along with starters, junior guards Ryan Nemhard and Nolan Hickman, junior forward Graham E.K., senior forward Anton Watson, and junior forward Ben Gregg. And we'll open up uh, with a quick opening statement from Coach Few. Well, just an awesome, awesome performance by uh, uh, these guys and the rest of the guys in the locker room, especially that second half of defense. I know we talked at halftime. Uh, we we had, got, had to bear down here and, and start getting some stops. Our offense was clicking really, really well. And, and to their credit, not only did they get the stops we needed, but we also shored up the glass, which was a problem in the first half. So couldn't be more proud. Uh, as I told them in the locker room, I mean, it's incredible uh, for nine straight uh, Sweet 16s, uh, what these guys have been able to do, especially in lieu of where we were earlier uh, in the year, but all the ones that came before them that, uh, that set this thing up. That just, it's a testament to all the great players that came through this program. Thank you, Coach. And now we will open up with questions for our student athletes, please. Right here, front, right. Davis Domestic, the Crimson. Question for uh, all five of you guys. Uh, the man sitting to your right right there is a legend of the game. He has made 24 straight NCAA tournaments, nine straight Sweet 16s, as we just said, and has been a part of March Madness in every season since he's been a head coach. Does that add pressure to you guys at all, or does it motivate you to perform at a high level like we saw today? I'll have Anton start that, please. <clears throat> I say it definitely motivates us. Um, as a team, we know, you know, how the coaches, uh, how they, how they want us to be Zags, and um, they just, they just represent the school, and um, we want to represent them too. And um, yeah, we just play hard, and um, they got the plan for us. They, they set it up for us, and you know, we just go out there and play, and we just get those wins, and it, it feels good. Ryan. Yeah, I agree. It's just, it's super motivating, um, knowing how long he's done it for. Um, knowing that he's one of the greats ever to coach this game. And, um, yeah, man, we just love playing basketball, playing for Gonzaga, and we love getting wins and, uh, and moving on. So uh, we look forward to the, the, the Sweet 16. Yeah, like these guys said, uh, it's definitely motivating. It's, it's not really much pressure. Just it's the Zag way. Um, he's been teaching us since, since we stepped foot on campus, man. It's been great. Ultimately, just happy to be back here, man. Yeah, man. Um, like these last three guys said, um, he's a GOAT. You know, that's, 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 that's a non-discussion, you know. But, um, yeah, man, we know our legacy. We know the history that Zags is. And uh, we just try to come out there every game and represent the history behind it. Yeah, I mean, like everybody else said, it is motivating. Um, you know, all these streaks are unbelievable that we have going on. Um, you know, we just got to come out and compete at the end of the day. And, you know, they give us the right game plans to, to get the win. And we just got to execute those. And, you know, all these streaks will keep on be, uh, being alive. Mm -hmm. John? John Coon, Associated Press. Um, when, when you look at the defensive effort that you guys had in the start of the second half, Kansas missed 23 of 27 shots to start. What, and, you know, and obviously they were shooting pretty well in the first half. What kind of changed defensively in, at the start of the second half where they just went from the way they'd been shooting to just ice cold like that? Uh, yeah, I think just going into halftime, we all knew that uh, first half wasn't our best defense. And we knew that they were going to get tired eventually of us just applying pressure and, you know, stick, us sticking to our plan. And, um, yeah, we started rebounding. We started getting stops. And that created that momentum and got us some runs. Get back in the left corner, please. Chris Conrani with The Athletic. This is for Ryan and Graham. Um, last April, you guys each announced on the same day that you were transferring to Gonzaga. I would imagine that this is what you envisioned when you decided to come here. Could you detail the acclimation process for each of you individually in terms of how you guys got acclimated within the program, got to know the guys, and basically help the program get back to where it is today? Um, yeah, I think it was 
pretty easy for us to get acclimated with the guys in the summertime. I mean, they're all super cool guys, um, easy to relate to, and just they're hoopers and they like to hoop just like us. So I, I feel like that was that was super easy coming in. And then obviously, when you start playing games, is you have to learn how to play with each other, learn the system, and, it, and it's just a, a new thing that we had to adjust to. And um, I feel like we've done a pretty good job with that. It wasn't pretty at first, but uh, we started figuring it out, and um, I think we're playing some good basketball right now. Yeah, like Ryan said, it was definitely easy getting acclimated. Um, it felt like a no-brainer, you know, coming here with these guys, just just the way that they enjoy themselves on the court and off the court, and then just what we do, um, make great runs like this during this time. Um, it was super easy, like, just just listening to these guys, seeing how they do things the Zag way, um, it's been pretty great. Okay, front left. Uh, Jim, from the spokesman review for Ryan, uh, some of the offensive numbers were off the charts. Uh, I think you guys were shooting 87 percent or something pretty deep into the second half. Why? Um, uh, it seemed like pick and roll was really successful tonight. Why did that work so well? And uh, I know you won't want to talk about a record, but you passed Perkins for the single season assist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Thought on that if you could. Yeah, man, it's just an honor to. to first of all, it's an honor to get that record, man. There's so many great PGs and players that went through this program. So that's an honor to have that record. And I feel like um, the coaches prepared us really well. Um, Gentry sent me a lot of clips last night of just their low two man. And we, we knew that was going to be there late. And um, when you have guys that are such good players like these guys up here, it's, it's easy. All you got to do is get them the ball, and they're going to put it in the hoop. So yeah. OK, middle. Cole Forsman, Sports Illustrated, Fan Nation Network. Graham, yesterday you were pretty confident you guys put together a good plan for Dickinson. What was that plan? Do you feel like you executed it well? And I know you dealt with foul trouble. How big was Huff down that stretch in the first half? Yeah, first off, B. Huff came in and made a great impact on the game. Um, so on both ends of the floor, he was playing his tail off. Super proud of him and the growth he's been making over the whole season. Um, yeah, like I said yesterday, we put together a great plan. I thought we executed that well, um, just staying mostly on his body, trying to stay physical the whole game, and definitely uh, getting him off the glass. OK, we are going to go to Zoom. Uh, Dan Tatora, do you have a question for our student athletes? If you do, please unmute yourself. Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. We talked about the history and, and all the success that this program has had. For you to wear zags across your chest for each of you, just what this university means to you and how you would describe the culture of this program. Oh, good. Anton, go ahead and start that, please. Yeah, uh, it means a lot, uh, especially me growing up in Spokane around that area, uh, just seeing the culture as a young kid and just how close knit everyone is. Um, it's why it's the reason why people want to come here and play. And, you know, the coaches, they win, and players, they win here. So uh, yeah, I think it's just amazing. It's an amazing school, amazing city, and you know, I love it. So <laughs> shout out to Spokane. It doesn't get too much love, but you know, that's my city. Ryan. Yeah, man, I would just say it's a family. It's just a bit, one big family, man. Obviously, my brother came here. Um, he loved his time here, and um, shoot, I'm loving my time here, too, man. It's just it's, it's the best, best school in the country for me, personally. Um, and I'm just enjoying my time here, man. So I, I love representing the Zags, and um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great honor to wear this jersey um, and be a part of something like this. It's a great family-oriented environment, and that was felt uh, from my visit. And ultimately, that was one of the main decisions why I came here. It's, it's been a pleasure, man. Um, yeah, wonderful group. Um, yeah, man, it's just it's a family all around. The culture that we got. Um, it's, a, it's, it's undefeated, you know, um, every single day we come, come to practice knowing that we're just trying to get better and we got a lot, a lot of basketball ahead of us, you know, so, um, yeah, it's been an honor. Um, yeah, this has been my dream school my whole life, you know, I grew up watching these guys um, forever, um, you know, watching the greatness of Coach Few and all the players that have come through here. Um, and so to be able to have Gonzaga on my chest is, I mean, it's an honor for me. Um, and that's why I lay it out on the court every day because, I mean, it means so much to me. Um, and I want to win for these guys. Okay, okay. right over there. Sean Walker, Kansas on Salt Lake City. Nolan, I understand you had a little bit of a traveling supporter section here. A couple of your coaches from Wasatch and some families from uh, San P County coming up to support this weekend. I guess, A, how, how does that kind of make you feel seeing so many familiar faces uh, back here in, in your kind of an adopted home state, I guess? Yeah. And did it translate to how comfortable you were on the court? Because you looked really comfortable out there going 7-11 and, and just hitting from three like that. 
That's love, man. I appreciate you thinking I'm, I look comfortable out there. Thank you, man. Uh, but yeah, man, it's always a blessing, you know, seeing my my, my family up there in the stands. You know, I, I make sure I, I look look up and make sure they're there, you know, before the games and everything. But um, you know, seeing coach, seeing my my ex coaches up there, you know, it's yeah, my former coaches. It's always it's, it's always dope seeing them come back and you know show love. Um, you know, they they got their kids here and everything too, man. So you know, it's a blessing, man. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, do we have any more questions for our student athletes today? Not seeing any. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll excuse them and good luck next week. And now we'll open a question for Coach Few right here front right. Hey, Coach. Uh, Davis Domestic with Crimson. Uh, Graham talked a little bit about the impact of Brayden Huff off the bench. Uh, Graham goes in foul trouble early. Brayden has 11 points for the game and impacts Kansas defensively. How have you seen him grow over the season, Coach, and what does he add to this team? Uh, I mean, he's grown actually throughout the whole redshirt year last year and, and uh, this year. I mean, I, th I think it, it's been a little bit hard for him sometimes adjusting to what kind of minutes he's, he's going to get, but whether it's five or 25. He does an amazing job because he changes the game when he comes in. I mean, it's nice to have for two different players. Obviously, you know Graham can pick and pop, but uh, you know Graham can can facilitate, and, and he can and he's just one of those bigs. We've had him over the years. If you think back, that his ball just goes in, and uh, it's it's a luxury to have. Uh, he's been a great teammate, and and, uh, um, and to your point, I mean his defense has grown here uh, as of late, which has been a huge key. Us. Okay, front left, please. Uh, Mark, just the level that uh, Ryan's operating the offense, what do you think? And then maybe Ben Gregg, uh, all the bruises and bumps, uh, but what is he doing through all that? Uh, hey, hey, listen, Ryan's been uh, at the highest level, you know, I think for about the last eight weeks, it feels like. Just just got our throttle all the way down and making great decisions and, and uh, uh, just managing these games. Uh, masterfully, but yeah, how about Ben? I mean, Ben's Ben's really hurting his ankles, bothering him, uh, and uh, you know he's getting treatment 24/7, late into the evening and early in the morning. And uh, I mean, you look at his line. I mean, he goes six for six and uh, 15 points, three assists, no turnovers, nine rebounds. I mean, just all on just straight hustle and guts. And and uh, I mean, he's he's. Mr. Zag, you know, like he said, he grew up uh, watching this program and it was his dream to play here, and he plays like it. And our, this group really feeds off him. You know, I think the staff and I figured that out. Uh, you know, and that's why, you know, we put him in the starting lineup. We loved his bump when he came in, in the, as a six man, but then, we, you know, put him in the starting lineup. It just it made the rotations generate more minutes for him, which has been huge. Back left corner. Mark, can you detail the recruitment process of Ryan and Graham when they were in the portal? And is there any memory that comes to mind about the day you found out they both decided to come to you on the exact same day? Uh, again, I mean, Ryan is, you know, he's been part of our family. I mean, he, he was coming to watch his brother play uh, way back when, you know, and he at that time got really tight with some of our players and, I, and even tight with my own kids, uh, my eldest uh, two. And, you know, just obviously Andrew's got a, you know, big piece of, of my heart, what I feel about him and what he was able to do at our place and just the type of person and player he is. So, you know, that was different than Graham's. Obviously, we never met Graham, but once you started talking to Graham, you know, you knew how mature he was. He's really, really, really driven and focused in all parts of his life. He's probably one of the most focused and organized uh, guys I've been around. And, uh, you know, he needed that. So it was kind of two different recru uh, recruit recruiting situations. Uh, he, you know, Graham really needed a plan and loved that we have plans for our guys and, and come through with those plans. Uh, I, I just know what, the way it was going. It was, it was exactly what we needed this year. I knew those two, those were the two guys we went after. And, and usually if you can get your top two choices, you're in pretty good shape. Okay, middle left right there. Hey, Mark, Josh Weinfuss with ESPN. With this being the ninth straight Sweet 16 for you guys, does it get harder every year to make it? And the second part of this is, do you enjoy this one a little bit more than past years because of this season? Oh, great. I mean, hey, it, it does get harder, 
I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's always hard, and I think that's what people need to understand. Sometimes you got to just take a step back, and whether it's making, I, I think we've been to 26 straight. I mean, the thing that people don't realize, we qualified for the COVID year. We won our tournament, and we're, we're sitting around waiting to see where we were sent. So we were in that tournament. We didn't need any help with that larges or anything. Um, but yeah, the Sweet 16 thing, we don't take it for granted at all. It's, it's, I'll say it again, I think it's the greatest sporting event in the entire world. Um, it's just so exciting and, and so just awesome to be a, a part of it. And probably even better than that is being able to take your groups through it. And to your point, like, hey, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, about mid-December or actually late December, this, this probably was, it was looking like, hey, maybe it wasn't going to happen, you know. But these guys, I'll give them credit, they, they remain coachable. This entire year, they just stuck with it. Stuck, stuck with it. They they believed in 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 the program and and the staff and what we we're trying to do. And and uh, you know, lo and behold, we we finally got we finally figured it out. Okay, we're time for two more questions, John, right here, and then you. John Coon, Associated Press. Um, looking at the second half defensive effort, one thing that really stands out is Hunter Dickinson only had two points, one rebound, and a turnover in 12 minutes. Um, after having a huge impact in the first half. What did you guys kind of do to, to adjust to him in the second half and, and contain him? Uh, well, first of all, Graham wasn't in his foul trouble in the second half, so we were able to keep Graham on him, which he did a great job uh, defending him. We've, we've changed our ball screen coverage because it was pretty pathetic in the, uh, in the first half, so we had to change some, some things there. Uh, and, and just – did a great job of making his shots hard, not giving him any easy ones. We still gave up a couple threes, and he, they were right on. They just kind of popcorned uh, out. But I think, by and large, we took away his easy ones. Right here, please. Uh, Coach, Eddie Pels, um, you said late December. I mean, what was the alarm level uh, you've seen a lot over, over yeah. the years? I mean, I don't. it wasn't crazy. It was just, hey, listen, if we don't – get going and playing better, you know, on both ends of the floor and figure this thing out, then it's probably not going to happen. So we got to figure this thing out. And, and uh, you know, we did, and we did it probably in the hardest of ways, right? I mean, we went on the road and won at Rupp, which uh, is not an easy place to, to, uh, to do that. And, and uh, obviously at St. Mary's and, and San Francisco, I think is a heck of a team. They're, they're good enough to play in this NCAA tournament. Um, and for us to beat that team three times was, uh, was quite a feat uh, uh, also. So we, we knew we had to finish strong. We did that. And, and then, you know, we, we've just always impressed upon them. You know, we get in this thing, we know, we know how to win in this thing. This is not a new thing for our program and for the staff and for the players that are in here. And I think they really bought into that and believed uh, of that, you know, especially the new ones. Okay. Thank you, Coach. And yep. Congratulations. Good luck next week. Thank you.